When you think about producing speed in the golf swing like Max Homa does, you probably think about setting your wrists a lot, getting a lot of wrist cock and then releasing those wrists coming down. But note how wide his wrists are going back all the way to the top. He has very, very little wrist cock and then actually starts getting rid of it immediately in the downswing. And it's not just Max Homa. Most all modern tour pros have very, very little wrist cock in their golf swings. Let's take a look. Take a look at the swing of Xander Shoffley. Notice how little he sets his wrist at the top. There's hardly any wrist set there from where he was at address, and then he immediately starts widening that angle on the way down. What about current world number one, Scotty Scheffler? Notice how wide his wrists are going back. Look at that, he's still barely set his wrist at all from where they were at address. And even as he arrives at the top, with all the momentum of the club swinging back, his wrists are still basically as wide as they were at address. And then he begins to widen even more coming down and into the release. Now, few people have maintained with as good as this guy. Note how Tiger takes the club back and how wide that angle is between his right hand and the shaft, his left hand and the shaft. There's very, very little wrist cock and he immediately begins to widen that angle as he comes down. So how do these golfers get so much speed with so little wrist cock? That's what we're gonna talk about next. So just how little wrist cock are these players putting into their swings? Well, we're gonna look at Olison's swing here. He, you can see he has negative 38 degrees of deviation uh, at address. And at the peak, he goes to negative 11. So in other words, he's cocked his wrist or radial deviation, if you're using the terms in the hack motion app, 27 degrees. Now, 27 degrees of wrist cock is very little. I'm gonna show you just how little in just a second. But what I wanna show you next is he actually starts to widen that before he actually completes the top of his backswing and widens it further. You can see the numbers going deeper negative. And then of course, as he gets down to impact, he's basically exactly where he started. So you can see the little bit of a throw at the top, exactly like I discussed in the recent GOAT code videos. And then as he comes down into impact, it's back to where he started. Now let me show you just how little 26 degrees of wrist cock is. So how much wrist cock are you seeing in top level players like Olison? So I've got my wrist set at 37 degrees right now. I'm gonna to stand to the side so you can see how much this is. And I'm recording this, so I'll show the data on the uh, hack motion. To go from where Olsen is at address to the top of his swing is right there. That's it. That little wrist cock is how much a lot of these guys are setting their wrists throughout the entire backswing. That's it. Now, of course, not all players do this. So I recently did an analysis on Jake Knapp. You can see that here. Obviously, he has more radial deviation or wrist cock at the top of his swing. It's probably less than you think. He also makes a very big turn and a big, long arm swing. So even though it looks like he's swinging like John Daly with a lot of wrist cock, I'm certain there's less here than what it actually appears. But one thing that you'll notice is he's combining both. He has more wrist cock or radial deviation and he has rotation. You can see his left wrist immediately moving into extension or cupping, scooping, flipping for many of you who, who think that's what's happening here. This allows the hands to rotate over much more quickly and the club head to move past the hands and body much more quickly, which is where speed comes from. And you'll see that as he's doing this, he has to time this release of the wrists with this long swing, the, the getting rid of that wrist cock, and the rotation together, which is why Jake Knapp's swing looks so smooth. It better be, or he's not going to be able to get both of those things to match up. He's going to have a lot of wrist cock and a lot of rotation. Those are tricky to time, but that is maximizing two powerful things in the swing. Rotational speed, as we're going to look at next, and this wrist cock. You put those both together and you've got a really powerful golf swing, but your timing and tempo needs to be really good in order to get the club fully released. You'll see here, he releases the hell out of it. Notice the club face is already looking straight 90 degrees away from the target line. That's how much rotation is happening in the golf swing and in a good player swing, especially with a ton of club head speed is there's a lot of forearm rotation, which we're gonna look at next. Now, I know some of you are freaking out saying, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You're not, no, you're not supposed to rotate your hands over. That's a terrible thing. You're gonna hook it or you're gonna have a hard time timing it. 
I understand that there's many different ways to swing the club, but in my studies of the GOAT code, you can see undeniably that all the greats rotated the heck out of their arms. And here's Trevor Immelman talking about what Jackie Burke said about the rotation of the forearms. Now, a lot of you, if you slice the golf ball, could look at this and copy this because the great Jackie Burke said the crossing over in the forearms, that area right there, well, that puts the power in the golf shot. When you contrast Jake Knapp's swing with Tiger's, Tiger's obviously had a much more compact look, and you'll see that he has much less radial deviation or wrist cock in his swing. And so if he doesn't have that extra lever in his swing like Jake does, where does he produce all of that club head speed? Well, it's through rotation. Watch his hands. So focus first on the face on view on the left and watch the logo on his glove disappear. And now imagine or understand how quickly this is really happening in the swing. I think slow motion video can obviously uh, be a great thing. I've spent countless thousands of hours studying slow motion video, but it also can be damaging and misleading. And you see things that are happening in the swing, but they're happening so quickly that you can't possibly try and replicate these things in your swing. And when you do, you just throw the timing off of everything. The hands are moving insanely fast, insanely fast. But when we slow it down, we can see just how much rotation is happening in the swing. Look at how his glove is rotating. The logo on his glove is rotating so insanely fast. And of course, this phase of the swing is where the club is moving the fastest of all. And the hands are rocketing over, rotating over. And when you look from down on the down the line view on the right, watch just how much that club face is rotating. It's already almost pointing at the ground and definitely away from the target line. That's pure forearm rotation. And when we look at the hack motion data, it shows just how much rotation there is compared to anything else in the golf swing. And that's where the speed of the goats comes from. So as you've seen, there's very little wrist cock happening in the case of Olison swing, Tiger swing. A lot of modern players have very little wrist cock. If we look at flexion and extension, just how much the wrist is cupping or bowing, you can see both of these lines are relatively pretty quiet. There's more movement in wrist cock than there is a flexion extension that's pretty quiet. But both of these lines are relatively straight when you compare them to adding rotation. When you add rotation, the scale of the map changes dramatically, or the scale of the graph. And you can see now both of the flexion, extension, and ulnar radiation, uh, ulnar and radial deviation, the lines look relatively flat because they've had to scale this up so much to show just how much rotation is happening in the swing. And that's what you saw in the, re the past video where I showed uh, Olison's swing against Tigers where you're seeing just how similar their release patterns are and how all of their speed is being generated primarily through rotation. Now, I know a lot of you are probably freaking out right now saying, whoa, 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 wait a second. You're not supposed to use your hands in the golf swing. They're too finicky. They're too hard to time. The muscles are too small and delicate. Well, take a look at Bobby Jones here. Now, again, there's many, many different ways to swing the golf club. You can swing with quiet hands. You can swing with your hands basically locked in place, rotate the body hard. But the greats all did it the same way. Look at how aggressive Bobby Jones' hands were through the hitting area. Now let's listen to another great major champion winner, multiple major champion winner, talk about how he thinks the hands should work through the golf swing. It's really getting those wrists, really getting them active, getting them flipping, getting them moving, getting them as fast as you can. We, but first of all, you got to get them moving. Narrow stance, long chip. That's gone as far as my normal nine iron. That's, that's gone out there 150 yards. So you can see from a shot, it doesn't require, especially on most of your shots from like 150, it doesn't require a big action to hit a shot 150 yards. Most times it just requires a nonchalant little flick down the road there and it will just do the job. Okay, so once we've got those active wrists, plenty of shots like that. You've seen me do this drill before. Again, this will get the wrist. You can line up five or six balls or more in a row and just flip them down there. Just walk in and get those wrists really firing into it. It may seem kind of shocking to hear Padraig talk about the golf swing like that and even use the F word, the flipping word, to talk about producing speed. But how do you think golfers produce speed? Look at Fred Couples here. Do you think he's ripping his body through as hard as he can? Watch his hands. 
He's releasing that golf club with his hands. It's hand speed like you hear Tiger talk about all the time. And Podrick even goes on and talks more about this in another video that he just put out that I think is even more important for you to understand the timing and the intention behind the release of the golf club. Because once you understand this, you're going to understand why these golfers swing so fast and make it look so darn effortless, just like Freddie Couples does. Most amateurs think you're delivering the club up here. You'll probably be too late. Too late. You'll probably end up drifting the shaft past impact. Back but delivery. you've got to deliver the club a little earlier. What we are finding in the golf swing is everything's got to be done earlier than you think. Everything. So if you were to look at it on a video, you probably, what you're seeing, you probably want to do probably two frames earlier, maybe three frames earlier. Well, do you, an amateur's like, I'm tired of watching my amateurs do it. They're just, they're trying to hit it and they're spinning out way past it. They, there's no way they can get the club no. back. They're not getting into this position so the club can ex keep accelerating. Yeah, keep accelerating. So amateurs, if whatever you're trying to do in your downswing, do it early, 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 early. Give yourself the time to let that club release and pass your body. What Padraig is saying here is so extremely important. I want to re-emphasize it. And I think it was Mike Austin who first was talking about this idea of intent in the golf swing. And what I mean by that is it's no secret that the great players, they release the heck out of the golf club. They rotate their forearms over like crazy. It's not the only way to swing the golf club. There's lots of different ways to do it. There's Victor Hovland, Joaquin Neiman way of rotating the body through and putting a lot of uh, rotational force on the body. You can do that. But the forearms is how the greats played the game, as I've shown over and over with from Bobby Jones on. But the trick is intent. And I, and I think what that's what Padraig is saying here, and I think that's what Mike Austin was talking about many years ago, that this release right here, this aggressive rotation, well, the intent starts up here. That's what's really important. What Padraig is saying is if you just try to rotate your body through as hard as you can, then the release is going to happen late. But if your release is starting here, like I showed with the Jack Nicklaus clip, saying he didn't believe as long as he was moving left, he couldn't start releasing the club early enough. What this is really talking about is the intention to release because it takes your brain a quarter of a second to react to stimulus and get your body to actually do it. The, the entire downswing happens in less than that, less than a quarter of a second. So you have to start thinking about, or thinking is not the right word, of course, you can't think your way through the golf swing, you have to feel it. But you have to feel that you're starting to release the club immediately in order to get it to release in time, like Padraig was saying. And that's what this member video is about, is we're going to talk about the ulnar deviation, radial deviation, how to get that proper amount of wrist cock in the swing so that you can have a proper amount of rotation and you take out a ton of timing. But before we get to the member video, I gave some of you members, I sent out an email this week about the Tiger Woods challenge. And I want to talk more about that real quick because that's gonna help you understand how quickly the, dime, the golf swing has to happen. So I'm gonna put up this, the, this video on the screen. It's gonna count down. If you can, put this up on a big screen on your TV and then also video yourself trying to match it. All I want you to do is try and match Tiger's pace from the start of the backswing, start of the transition, and into impact. You don't have to hit balls. You can just swing in your living room without hitting balls. But you're gonna realize that you're probably swinging way slower and you're way later coming into impact. In fact, you'll probably still be finishing your backswing while Tiger is at the top of his, or while Tiger's actually hitting the ball. He'll be at impact while you're probably finishing your backswing. So let's take a look at this, give this a try. It's gonna help you really understand what's really happening in the swing and I'm gonna give you the trick on how to do this at the end. Well, how did you do? If you're like most golfers, you were way late coming into impact. And there's a trick to this that goes against pretty much all conventional golf instruction and convince it even against many of the things that many of the greats said. But here's the goat himself talking about what he does with his hands, what his grip pressure is like that allows him to swing this quickly throughout the entire golf swing. 
Uh, I've always had really tight hands on the golf club, so that doesn't change. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second. What? What did he just say? I mean, what about Sam Snead here? Sam Snead said you should hold the club like you were squeezing a baby bird. You didn't want to kill it. Or you're holding a tube of toothpaste. You didn't want the toothpaste to pull out of the tub or pour out of the tube. Tiger's saying he's holding onto the club tight. That is a very, very different way of swinging the golf club. It's a very different way of thinking about the golf swing. Sam here in this clip here is talking about rhythm and timing and dancing. You can't be tight when you're dancing. <laughs> you're not going to be a very good dancer. Holding onto the club tight, especially with the right hand, is what's going to help you match Tiger's pace. It's one of the secrets of Tiger's swings, if you will. And in fact, it's not just in his full swing. This carries over to his putting, I believe. In fact, I've put this together in my own putting and have started finally actually becoming a good putter. I have so much more confidence because I'm actually squeezing the club pretty damn tight with my right hand. And that was what allowed me to match up my radial deviation, cutting down the amount of wrist cock that I saw in my swing and that you see in Olsen swing and Tiger swing using the hack motion data. So that's what we're going to talk about in the premium video for members is what do you do with your hands? How do they really work in the swings of the greats? How do they work in tiger swings? And, and how tight do you need to hold it? What is it really all about? Do I need to hold the club loose? Do I need to hold the club tight? We're going to talk about all of that in the member video, how to get this radial deviation down so that you don't have so much wrist cock, so you're not fighting trying to square the face. You don't have to have great rhythm and tempo. You can be aggressive. You can hit hard with the right hand when you hold the club tight. So. Click the link down in the description below or down in the pin in the comments and it'll take you straight to the member video. And we're going to talk about how to get this wrist set to match up with what you see all the greats doing, what you see in the hack motion data. We're going to match it up perfect. And a lot of it is going to have to do with grip pressure.